Hey guys, uh, for the past two months I've been working on adding a scripting system to the game engine, uh, which uh, is consists of adding a compiler and designing my own programming language and adding a virtual machine that runs on this uh, virtual bytecode that my compiler generates. And now finally everything is piecing together and the engine allows the user to define a custom behavior for the characters on screen, which is pretty nice. Here is a mock project I open up. Uh, now let's cut to the chase here. If we click on a character, we can click Road Create uh, Load Create Script, and I have a mannequin script uh, pre-written with no code in it. Uh, what happened now is basically the high-level programming language gets loaded into the engine, compiled to bytecode, bytecode fed to VM, VM runs, produces side effect, side effect affects the engine data, including the, the attributes of this character, and therefore you will see changes on a screen. As simple as that. What we can do now is hit F5, which is the game mode. In game mode, uh, every frame, the the update function we define here gets up it gets applied to the character as long as they have a script attached to them and right now since our update function doesn't do anything our character doesn't do anything hit f5 to go back to editor mode we can write some code to change that so i want to start by adding a basic movement controller so if we hit wasd the character should move accordingly to their directions. Okay, so basically what the script does is it first define a velocity variable, which is a float3. Uh, meaning it's a 3D vector, and depending on the input, we get we modify the velocity vector and then apply that to the position. Um, the input is a data structure gets passed into the update function. We can detect key presses by accessing attributes like so. The, the the thing in this language first you can notice is that input is a pointer, but we're still using a dot operator. It's because the dot operator is a double duty. It's it, you can use it to access members in a, through a pointer, and you can access a just a plain old data. Another thing you can notice is I didn't define the type for velocity. Uh, that's the type inference feature of the programming language. So you could do this just so it's more clear, but because the compiler can figure things out at compile time, it just you can do this, and it just knows it has to be a flow three. Now let's reload script, run it. Now we see the character is finally moving. That's that's uh, reassuring. So things are working at least. Now the it, it looks very rigid, right? You don't. It's T posed. It doesn't do any animation. And let's add some animation. So what this section of the code says is if the velocity is non-zero, entity runs the animation clip at index zero, which is a walking animation and it advances the animation cursor by a delta time amount and if it happens to wrap around I mean if it happens to go over the total animation clip length you wrap around it and now we reload the script and this should now be walking and that is what we see pretty nice However, it's not facing the correct direction when we walk. So let's use, by using the direction of velocity, we can orient the character accordingly. And this is 
realizable in our script. So uh, let, let, let's do that. So to explain this section of the code, what we did is to take the default direction, take the current direction, the cross product tells us a, the, an orthogonal vector. We can use that as our axis of rotation. And we can compute the angle between two vectors using a dot product. And by using the axis of rotation and the angle, we can make a quaternion that represents the entity's orientation. Now we reload script, we've got a problem, dot, this is a dot three. And the other problem was, oh, that was it. So let's see, does this work? Yes. Well, now it's facing the right way. we got a problem though, because um, now it's too snappy. It's too unnatural for him to kind of move away from a direction that fast. So if my movement is rapid, you can see this is not natural at all. So it's something we can do again in the script is we can say target orientation is what we just calculated. And the thing we can do here is lerp from the current entity orientation to the target orientation smoothly by a 90%. This is going to give us a nice curve uh, if we run this uh, successfully. That's essentially a, uh, approaching the target exp exponentially, but never reaches it. Load the script. That's not smooth at all. Well, let's find out what's wrong with it. Oh, 0 0.9. I was thinking about it the other way. So 0 0.9 is way too much. It's pretty much snapping to it. So if it's 0 0.1, much more smoother fall off. Uh, we can see the character is finally yeah, a lot more natural. So if I smash my keys, it doesn't flip out, which is great. The last bit is the game camera, it's always just staying there. And usually that doesn't happen in a game. Uh, you want the camera to follow the character. So let's make this camera into a third person camera. Again, I have a camera file just predefined here. And the code is pre-written, so let's just jump straight to the point here. Let's see this in action. Okay, cool. Now we got a fully controllable character in our game. And this is fully specified by the user. The engine doesn't define the behavior. You can, uh, the, the, the user of the game engine can now fully specify behaviors on their own. Uh, that was a rel relatively simple demonstration. You can see how you can make things that are much more complicated, like a, uh, this allows you to do like a pack of wolves, just moving around, uh, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. It's pretty exciting. So now the game engine, instead of just drawing a pile of shit that's static on the ground, you can actually move it and animate it. That is uh, very nice. So yeah, there is the demonstration for the engine.